Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. EAA Dynon STC approved list is expanded. SpaceX is back in the satellite launch business. Elaine Chow answers questions for Senate Commerce Committee. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's January 16th and this is Airborne Unlimited. When Dynon and EAA announced that they had worked together to obtain an STC allowing the Dynon EFIS D-10A and EFIS D-100 displays to be installed in type certificated aircraft, it was a major step forward in bringing the technology and safety found in experimental home-built aircraft to the market for type certificated aircraft. Now an expanded model list for EAA's Accessible Safety STC has been granted by the FAA. The approval now includes six models of Beechcraft airplanes, 14 various Cessna models of aircraft, five models of Piper PA series aircraft, and some models of the Mall, Mooney, and Grumman AA series aircraft. EAA STC LLC is EAA's subsidiary for STC development. The STCs sell for $100 to EAA members and allow for the installation of the Dynon unit as either a primary or backup attitude indicator in eligible aircraft. EAA's Sean Elliott said, quote, EAA will continue to push for an appropriate framework that manufacturers may use to certify all manner of low-cost, modern equipment that will enhance the safety and utility of the legacy fleet. Elliott added, we're not done yet. Following their space launch stand-down as a result of the launch pad explosion of a Falcon 9 rocket on September 1st of last year, SpaceX is back in the launch business. This weekend, SpaceX's Falcon 9 successfully delivered 10 satellites to low Earth orbit for Iridium. The 10 satellites are the first of at least 70 satellites that SpaceX will launch for Iridium's next generation global satellite constellation, called Iridium Next. SpaceX conducted the launch from Space Launch Complex 4E at Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. And in the SpaceX tradition of putting on a really good show, they not only successfully launched the satellites, they also recovered the Falcon 9 first stage booster on a robot recovery ship in the Pacific Ocean. Iridium's primary launch campaign consists of seven SpaceX Falcon 9 launches, deploying 10 Iridium Next satellites at a time. These 70 Iridium Next satellites are scheduled to be deployed by early 2018. Launches back on the East Coast are expected within weeks. After the break, Elaine Chow gives few specifics on aviation issues to Senate Committee. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website, or podcast, just email to news spy at aero news.net. Transportation Secretary Designate Elaine Chow faced the Senate Commerce Committee last week for her confirmation hearing, giving few specifics on some pending aviation issues. The FAA's spending authorization is set to expire on September 30th, and the issue of ATC privatization is likely to come up again when Congress debates another long-term spending bill for the agency. Senator Bill Nelson, an opponent of the idea, said there are major disagreements between the House and the Senate on the issue. Chow responded that there needs to be national consensus on the topic and the administration has not made a decision on this point. USA Today reports that Chow said that the country needs to devote more resources to work on infrastructure, including airports, but did not give specifics about funding sources. 
She also briefly acknowledged some subjects as Norwegian Air Shuttle and Middle Eastern carriers that some claims are getting unfair subsidies from their government. In a blanket statement, Chow said, quote, Safety will continue to be the primary objectives. Regulatory decisions should be rooted in analysis derived from sound science and data. Each week we share with you an online video that one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Aero Video of the Week. Final lift off of Talk to the manufacturers about that. <laughs> Sometimes FAA press conferences can be a bit boring, but this one regarding the rule changes to FAR 23 brought everyone to attention. Search Press Conference Part 23 Rule Announcement on YouTube. After these messages, nominations for inductees into the Sport Aviation Hall of Fame are now open. Renbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Renbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, Bree Cross is going to summarize some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Thanks, Laura. EAA is now looking for nominations for inductees into the Sport Aviation Hall of Fame. EAA says the Hall of Fame is a tribute to the pioneering spirit and innovation that has marked the evolution of flight. Check the EAA website for nomination deadlines. Iran Air has taken delivery of its first new aircraft, which is an Airbus A321. The delivery is the first from an order placed by Iran Air in December 2016 for 100 Airbus aircraft, which will renew and expand their fleet. Florida residents and visitors who want to watch a rocket launch into space should have plenty of opportunities to do so in 2017. The Space Coast will be a busy place as there are 32 potential launches planned from Cape Canaveral this year. U.S. Airlines will no longer be required to make a pre-boarding announcement that the Samsung Galaxy Note 7 phone is prohibited from transport on aircraft. The devices are still prohibited, but the DOT has lifted the requirement that airlines make specific pre-boarding notifications. An internal memo sent to Boeing employees last week announced a new round of buyouts for engineers in all divisions of the company. According to reports, layoff notices for engineers are forthcoming later this year, with two or more rounds likely. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Back to you, Laura. Thanks, Bree. Alphabet Inc., whose parent company is Google, has said their X development unit has quietly dropped plans for high-altitude solar power drones to deliver internet connectivity to remote areas. The reason, according to a statement from Alphabet, is that its Project Loom balloons look much more promising as a way of delivering the internet to underserved regions. In a report from the Wall Street Journal, it said that the Google parent company prefers to focus on projects that are most likely to produce a profit. By comparison, at this stage, the economics and technical feasibility of Project Loon present a much more promising way to connect rural and remote parts of the world, according to the report. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe, and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you tomorrow.